Praise God. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of God be with your spirits. And may the grace of God abound in your hearts through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is once again a bond servant, a love slave of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm your brother and a servant in the kingdom of God, our Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've been talking about the Father's business. The Father's business. The Father's business. Hallelujah. I know that we all know that we have one God and Father. Our Father which is in heaven and one Lord, Jesus Christ. And one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So we saw in scripture that the Lord Jesus Christ, at a, a tender age, when he was just 12 years old, he spoke words that many children wouldn't speak at that age. I want us to look at that verse again in the book of Luke chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 2, verses 48. Holy Spirit of God, fill your people with wisdom and understanding. Enlarge their capacity to understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Luke chapter 2, verses 45. It says, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Oh, the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Brilliant boy, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Verses 47, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, <laughs> why have you thus dealt with us? Behold, your father and I sought thee sorrowing. It says, behold, Joseph, your father, and I, Mary, we sought you sorrowing. We were sad and distressed because we have not seen you for the past three days. Why did you deal with us this way? This is the answer Jesus gave them. Verses 49. How is it that you sought me? How is it? How come you're looking for me? I don't understand. Why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I was about my father's business? Verses 50. And they understood not the scene in which he spoke unto them. Verse 51, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in his heart, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now the Bible says Jesus Christ at the age of 12 years old. He was sitting in the midst of the doctors. The scribes and Pharisees, those who knew how to divide the law based on the Israel standards. These men were scholars. They were scholars. Maybe Gamaliel was also there. The man that trained Paul. These guys were scholars of the law. They knew the law by heart. Not only by heart, but they, they could give you answers concerning matters dealing with the law. People gave them respect. They gave them high, the high seats in the marketplaces. These guys were known because they were scholars. They were doctors. <laughs> they could dissect the laws of Moses. Praise God. They had disciples. They had students. But this young boy, Jesus, at the age of 12, was sitting in the midst. Bible says he was asking them questions. 
He was asking them questions. And hearing them. And then afterwards, when they heard him, they were astonished at his understanding and answers. They also asked him questions in return. And they were astonished. They were amazed that this boy had such intellect, such understanding, such wisdom. Now he told his mother, I, I am about my father's business. He's 12 years old. He said, don't you know? Wish ye not that I must, I must be about my father's business? He said, I must be. He said, don't you know that I must be? So he was telling the mother, don't you know that there is a business I must be about? He said, my father has a business. There are things that are binding to my father, that are necessary to my father. And I must be about these things. Don't you know? Oh, dear God. Dear God, it was sitting in your midst in the temple. Oh, wonderful Lord. Let us go to John chapter 2, verses 13. John 2, 13, I read. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of that house has eaten me up. Oh, dear God. Now this boy Jesus, let us go back to, to the time he was 12 years old. He was 12 years old. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon him for him to start public ministry. He had not yet received the anointing to go out in the public to do ministry because that would be at the age of 30 years old after his temptation he could not yet stand in the office of a messiah of a savior it was not yet the time the time had not yet come the fullness of time had not yet come but yet the zeal of God in his heart had consumed him so much. The zeal was burning so much in the, in, in, in the heart of the Lord Jesus. He was consumed with a zeal for the Father. He knew the Father has a business. He wanted to get so much involved even at a young age when he was not yet ready. The Father was still preparing him and getting him ready. But that passion, that zeal was burning so much. It was burning so much in his heart. He could not wait. He wanted to be about his father's business. He said, I must be about my father's business. He said, the father has things that are binding to him. I must be about his business. That is why he went into the temple to hear, to also learn. He wanted to learn why the Lord Jesus Christ, he knew there were things he had to know to in order to be effective in the ministry or in the business of his father. So he was learning a lot of things and he had to be about his business. The father has a business, brothers and sisters. He has a business. He has a business. That must be taken care of. And we are the man and woman that must take care of the father's business. It is his children that must take care of his business. He wants his children, his sons and daughters to take care of his business. Yesterday we read this scripture in the book of Luke chapter 4. Verses number 43. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Luke 4, verses 43 says, And he said unto them, I must preach the, the, the gospel of the kingdom of God, or I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. When you read Matthew's account, he said, he started preaching. Let us go there very quick. Matthew chapter 4 as well. 4 verses 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of a kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Among the people. Hallelujah. And when you read it, chapter 4, verses 17, it says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the Father's business, to bring the kingdom of God on this earth. The Father's business is not to give you food. The Father's business is not to give you clothes. The Father's business is not to give you houses. The Father's business is not selling houses, it's not selling cars. The Father's business is not selling clothes. The Father's business is not selling jewelry. The Father's business is not physical things. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of food. Romans chapter 14 verses 17. Romans 14, 17, let us read that very quick. Kalibo Salamatale Ebria Shataya. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Libu Suandaya. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of man thank you precious lord jesus he said he must preach the kingdom of god to other cities because for this purpose was he sent he said i was sent in order to preach the kingdom of god to other cities that is a business of the father he did not come on this earth for him to get nice houses to dwell in. He didn't come on this earth to get nice cars to drive. He didn't come on this earth to get the finest chariots of horses to ride and to get the nicest boats. He didn't come on this earth to store up treasures on this earth to get the gold, the diamonds, and the silver. This is not why he came on this earth. Matter of fact, he says, store up not your treasures upon this earth. The riches, the goals of the earth belong to him, but he said not to store it up. Oh, you see, oh dear God, this is not why he came on the earth. He was not here on earth to make a name for himself. He was not here on earth to, 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 to acquire physical riches. That is not why he came. He said, for I am sent to preach the gospel of a kingdom, the good news of a kingdom of God. That is the Father's business. So he was on a mission as an ambassador of God. He was on a mission. And the business of the Father is the business of souls, the business of winning souls, the business of delivering people, the business of setting captives free. That is a business he does. The business of bringing joy and peace and righteousness in the lives and hearts of people. The business of bringing his dominion everywhere you go. You are an ambassador of Christ. And you have been assigned mission brought, brought into this world in order for you to, 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 to bring the kingdom of God. The Bible says we, they are not of this world. Don't you remember Jesus said when he was praying to the Father? He said, Father, they are not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. You see that? They are not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. But why are we in this world? If we're not of this world. Are we here for money? Are we here for fame? Are we here to build houses? Are we here to acquire cars and riches for ourselves? Definitely not. But we'll get all these things for sure. You'll get the cars and houses. But this is not why you're here. You see, there are some people that say, Well, we are the reason why we all traveled 
to Canada, travel to the United States was for money. Oh, dear God. That is a lifestyle of a pagan, someone who doesn't know God. Say, so, well, we all live for money. We all work for money. We, we, we all work for money. That's, that's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. We all work for money. Jesus said in John 17, 16, they are not of the world. John 17, 16, he says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So now we are not of this world, meaning we don't live our lives like the worldly people live. If we are not of this world, then we are not in this world to live like the worldly people. We don't depend on the things of this world to survive. We are not of this world, so we are not here to acquire material wealth. Though we'll have them. But we are not of this system, worldly system. We are from above, but sent here on a mission. And our mission is not to seek for clothes and for food. Because clothes and food are not a big deal. The entire universe belongs to our Father. The gold, the riches, the diamonds belongs to him. And we are joint heirs. We are the heirs of God. This means they belong to us. But we don't live for that. We don't live for, we don't live for that. We don't seek that. We are here on a mission. And we are here to do the Father's business. You see, how would you feel if you had a child, if you had a business, a big business, and you have children that are growing, but these children... Let's say they are grown. They don't help you in the business. They don't help you to do your business. But all they are concerned about is clothes, food, and, and material things. They're always telling you, mommy, daddy, I need more clothes. I need a, a new car. I need more shoes. I need makeup. I need this. I need that. And they... they they are not even interested in your business. They don't ask you how is your business going. They don't go into your shop if you have one. They don't go to the business place. They don't offer to help. They are not willing to help. And you're doing everything, but all they are concerned about is food and clothes and asking you for money every time. But yet they are careless about your business. You will get fed up. Because you would want them to also grow to be able to take a position business. You would want them to partake, to be responsible men and women that can take over, be in the business, be in the field, handle business. You get that. So our father brought us on this earth, not for us to seek for material things, but he brought us here because you're born again, remember, you're not of this world. The day that you're born again, what happened is that the old you died. And you're born again, placed back in the same body. Why? Because you need a body to function on this earth. So you're born again, but of God from above. But you were placed back in the same body. You see the same body, but you are a new creation living in the body that the old man used, used to live in. But a new creation comes from above, is born from above. And you are on this earth for a mission, for the Father's business, not for money. So when you're seeking for money, for clothes, for, for all these things, you, you, you don't know why you're here. You think the Father brought you here just for money. You think the Father's priority is just to give you clothes and money, to pay your rent. Why would he leave you here? He's not that cruel to leave you here. He could have left you in heaven or brought you in heaven. Why? Because the, the, the streets are gold. That's what they walk upon. Diamonds are nothing there. So do you think he brought you here to suffer? Nobody brought you here to handle business, to do something greater 
than money, to do something greater than silver, to do something greater than acquiring houses, but to deal with the eternal destinies of men, to deal with the eternal salvation, of, to deal with the eternal spirit and soul of the man and woman that you work with. So he wants you to be about his business first. Seek first his business. Seek first his kingdom. He is in the business of increasing his kingdom. He is in the business of establishing his kingdom on the hearts and on the minds of people. This is why you receive the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost has come, you shall receive power to be my witnesses in the entire world. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So you receive the Holy Spirit to be not only to help you and to teach you to guide you, but to be above the Father's business wherever you go so that you will bring the manifestation of the kingdom of God in the hearts, the minds, and the body of people. His business is to establish his kingdom in the spirit, soul, and body of individuals and also to establish his kingdom in your workplace, in your school, in your neighborhood, and Everywhere you go, that is a father's business. Business of winning souls, setting captives free, bringing peace, joy, righteousness, wisdom, bringing godly establishment, destroying principalities and powers, and releasing and establishing the principalities and powers of God over nations, over government, over cities, over provinces, over your neighborhood, over your family. Everywhere you go, that is the Father's business. Bringing the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God, imposing the principles the lifestyle of the kingdom of God wherever we are and destroying the powers and the works of darkness, changing people's lives. That is his business. You must see beyond just clothes and shoes. You must see beyond just your house rent. You must see beyond just cars. You come from a planet where gold and diamonds are nothing. All things belong to your father. He created the universe. So how can you be living on an earth where you've been sent for mission, be living for fleshly things, worldly things, living like the pagans who have no who don't know God? We must be about our father's business. I'll continue on the next next devotional. Stay blessed. Goodbye. I don't understand. Why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I was about my father's business? Verses 50. And they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. Verses 51. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in his heart, in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now the Bible says Jesus Christ at the age of 12 years old. He was sitting in the midst of the doctors, the scribes and Pharisees, those who knew how to divide the law based on the Praise God. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of God be with your spirits. And may the grace of God abound in your hearts through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is once again a bond servant, a love slave of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm your brother and a servant in the kingdom of God, our Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've been talking about the Father's business. The Father's business. The Father's business. Hallelujah. I know that. Large their capacity to understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus' name. Luke chapter 2, verses 45. It says, And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him, and it came to pass. It came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Oh, <laughs> 
the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions. Brilliant boy, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Verses 40. We all know that we have one God and Father, our Father which is in heaven, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, and one Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So we saw in Scripture that the Lord Jesus Christ, at a, a tender age, when it was just 12 years old, he spoke words that many children wouldn't speak at that age. I want us to look at that verse again in the book of Luke chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 2, verses 48. Holy Spirit of God, fill your people with wisdom and understanding. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, <laughs> why have you thus dealt with us? Behold, your father and I sought thee sorrowing. It says, Behold, Joseph, your father, and I, Mary, we sought you sorrowing. We were sad and distressed because we have not seen you for the past three days. Why did you deal with us this way? This is the answer Jesus gave them. Verses 49. How is it that you sought me? How is it? How come you're looking for me? 